Dominic by William Steig, 17. All the males at the wedding, including the bridegroom, took up whatever weapons they could find in the crystal ballroom. Window poles, chair legs, table legs, canes, skewers from the kitchen, long ladles, rolling pins, brooms, mops, and even fruits and vegetables that could be used as missiles, prickly pineapples, heavy melons, coconuts. Dominic preceded them through the main portal, holding aloft his trusty spear. It was a motley army, dressed as the soldiers were in festive clothes and brandishing their makeshift weapons that erupted from the brilliantly illuminated ballroom into another enchanted night. The peaceful moon shed its benign light on the horde of enraged animals going after their enemies. To Dominic, the air reeked with the vile aroma of the villains. Guided by this, he led the way out of town over the fields, across a rocky stream, and into a forest where the moonlight filtered through a maze of leaves. Suddenly, he held up his spear, and the army halted. The stench of the doomsday gang was becoming intolerable. Proceed slowly, Dominic whispered, and he moved forward with caution, his army at his back. Soon they saw campfires set in a clearing, and there, sitting around the fires, were the various villains making ugly jokes and laughing raucously, their fangs lighted up by the flames. Some were rolling on the ground, screeching guffaws. Some were slapping their neighbors' backs in relish of their mal maliciousness. Their leader, the fox, was dancing about, reminding them loudly of incidents at the crystal ballroom fire and prancing up and down as if trying to stamp out his own seizures of laughter. They were all sure they had just achieved the most glorious moment of infamy. They thought the damage must be enormous and imagining the pain and unhappiness of the victims made their cups of joy run over. Dominic's army watched in horrified fascination. Could creatures really be that wicked? Apparently they could. At them, shouted Dominic. His army came tearing through the trees, swinging their assorted cudgels right and left, powerful with righteous rage. Dominic thrust and slashed with his spear. The hilarious mood of the villains vanished. Taken by surprise and unarmed, some fled even through the campfires, kicking sparks and embers in all directions and singeing their fur. Some fell to their knees begging for mercy, which was not forthcoming. Others managed to grab their weapons and fight back. Those who ran were chased and soundly cudgeled and pelted with fruits and rocks and clods of earth as they disappeared. Those who fought back were finally routed with Dominic's army after them, dispensing farewell thumps and thwacks. But Dominic had been injured. The avenging army returning to the clearing found him on the ground unconscious, his spear at his side. The villains had concentrated their fury on Dominic since they hated him the most. He had been dealt some damaging blows, a few of which came from his own cohorts trying to help him. Seeing their leader so still, they feared he might be dead, and as they moved toward him, some began to weep. Barney Swain listened to Dominic's heart. He was beating strongly and steadily. He assured the others that Dominic was very much alive, though apparently injured. They made a stretcher out of some sticks laced together with belts, covered it with grass and leaves, and carefully laid Dominic on, his, on this bed of greenery. They carried him back into Granville, careful not to jolt or disturb him in any way. Lying unconscious, Dominic imagined... He was still fighting the enemy and muttered, There! Or, Take that, you fiend! He thrust an imaginary spear at one scoundrel or another. He regained consciousness early in the morning and found himself lying on a silken bed in a room fragrant with flowers. In the plush new home of Mr. and Mrs. Barney Swain, seated at his side was Dr. Fetlock, a horse. Barney and Pearl were there in the room, Matilda Fox and her children were there, and others as well. They were all gazing at Dominic with concern. Where am I? were his first words. He was told where he was. What happened? he then asked. He was told what had happened. Oh, he said, I seem to remember. The physician then introduced himself and told Dominic he had been badly bruised, but no bones were broken. I heard all over, said Dominic. Dr. Fetlock took Dominic's pulse, thoughtfully listening to his heart, looked into his ears and throat, verified that his nose was cool as it should be, and recommended a few days of bed rest and something to eat immediately. Barney Swain went out on the balcony to announce to the crowd gathered outside that their hero would be all right. 
and they, after waiting up, up anxiously all through the night, cheered and went home at last to sleep. Dominic had a meal of some good food, of some of the good food remaining from the wedding. How happy we are that you are that you're well! Exclaimed Matilda Fox. We were so worried," said Pearl Swain, a maiden a day ago and now a married woman. Barney Swain touched Dominic's arm and gave him a look that said much. The five goslings swarmed around the bed and gabbled gaily. Dominic, feeling very much loved, soon fell asleep again. The others tiptoed out. Long hours later, Dominic woke up. He was feeling fine, fit, and eager to be out in the world, where everything was waiting to happen. He also thought the Swains should be left to themselves so they could begin enjoying their married life. Careful to make no noise, he got out of bed. He packed his bandana, put on his beret, and wrote a note thanking everyone for their care and concern, adding that he hoped to see them all in the future. He left the house unseen by anyone. It was twilight. And that's the end of chapter 17.